Hi, fifth graders. This is Mr. Oman here. We are going to be finishing up your project today. At this point, you should have uh, a sprite greeting the user, giving definitions of prime, composite, and factor. So at this point, I have put in some code here, but it doesn't give everything. You should have, make sure that yours greets the user and gives the definition of prime, composite, and factor. For day two, what you're going to be working on is asking the user to enter any number, giving the answer, and ending the conversation. Okay. Uh, once you give the answer, it's you've done all the correct processing. So let's get started with the code for this. How do I ask a user for something? Well, I go to this sensing drawer here, and I drag over this ask block. And I can say, please enter a number. If you want to add more text to that, that's fine. No problem at all. When you ask uh, for a number, it gets stored in this container or variable called answer. That container or variable called answer, we're going to be using um, going forward. At this point, we want to drag over an if-else statement. So this if-then-else block. We want to account for some of the special cases. What if a user enters a negative number? Or what if they enter the number zero? Or what if they enter the number one? We want to be able to say, with all of those situations, make sure that they say this number is not prime or composite. Otherwise, go through and start uh, doing the processing for it. So first, I want to take care of this little uh, section in the if block. I want to go back into my uh, operators. And I want to drag over two of these ORs. So I'll drag over one of the ORs, let it stay over the highlight and put it in there, and then drag over a second OR and make sure it hovers over the second slot here and drop it in. Now you, now it looks like OR, OR. What I can do at this point is I can say, if the answer is less than zero, or if the answer equals zero, or if the answer is equal to one, then I want to say something. Okay, So let's go back into our sensing drawer and drag over answer variable or container three times. If the answer, and I'm going to drop them over the first block, if the answer is less than zero, or if the answer is equal to zero, or if the answer is equal to one, I want to be able to say this number is neither prime nor composite. Okay, I took care of the special cases. Now I get into the real processing uh, if they give me a number higher, two or higher. Well, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to now put all of that in this else uh, block here. You all said that what a computer needs to do is divide that target number or the answer by one and go all the way up through the target number. Well, how do I do that? What is that thing dividing? What are we going to call that? Well, actually, we're going to make another variable or container. And that variable or container, that container is going to have the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we're going to call it divisor. So if I click OK, it makes all of these new blocks for this. And you'll notice that it shows up over here. I can just uncheck it right here, and it gets rid of it. If I ever wanted to see what's that container storing, I can show it or hide it. Well, what did you say you want to do? Set the divisor to 1. You all said in class that start with 1 and then keep going. Oh, the keep going is under the control. And I want to do a repeat until block. And I'm going to drag this underneath where it says set divisor. Right underneath, drag that under. Repeat until the divisor equals the target number, right? Repeat it until the divisor equals the target number. So what I'm going to do is go over to operators. And I'm going to drag over this equals. And I'm going to drag one more thing over. I just need you to trust me on this first, and then I'll explain it. Drag over this plus and drop it in the second slot. 
So now it looks like equals spot plus spot, okay? So you said keep doing something, keep dividing by the divisor, okay? Repeat until repeat this stuff until the divisor equals that target number. Well, let's go to sensing, drag over answer, and wait, you say it, you might be like, wait, why do you have a plus right here? We actually have to put in a plus one to make sure that all this code gets executed. If we didn't put the plus one, it would stop and it wouldn't divide by the target number. It would just stop before it did the dividing. This gets up to the target number, it goes up one and then it stops. So what do I want to do? I want to keep dividing the divisor, the target number by the divisor. What I'll have to do is go over to control and drag over an if block. Here's where it gets interesting. A computer doesn't know that something's a divisor, but a computer can tell you whether there's a remainder left over. We know that if a number is a factor of another, it doesn't have any remainder. The remainder is zero, right? Uh, if four is a factor of two is a factor of four, there is no remainder when you divide four by two. But four divided by three, there is a remainder. A computer can tell us whether there's a remainder. If there's a remainder, we know that there's no, it's not a factor. If there's not, we know that it is a factor. So what's that amazing function called? That tool is called mod. So if something mod another equals zero, or if there's a, rem uh, a remainder of zero, then we know that it's a factor. So what we can do is drag over this equals block right here, put it inside your if then, okay? Drag over this mod and put it in the first slot. And let's put a zero right here in this second slot. So now I said, if the, uh, if the answer divided by the divisor has a remainder of zero, then we know that it's a factor. So let's go over and drag over answer and divisor. So if the answer divided by the divisor has a remainder of zero, then add that number to the list of factors. Wait, I don't have a list of factors. Oh, wait, I've got something that says make a list. Let me click on that. And let's call this list factors. Now, oh man, this just made this list and it gave me even more blocks. So what I can do is drag over this add and what I want to say is add that divisor to the list of factors. So add divisor to this list called factors. I'm done with this little if part right here but now I need to, I started at one, now I need to go up to two. How do I do that? I can now change the divisor by one. Okay, so I can change the divisor by one. So it started at one, goes through this, hits here, goes to two, then goes to three. And it's going to repeat this until it goes to four. And then once it hit five or whatever number it is, it's going to stop right there. All right. Now I've got this set. This is going to tell me what the factors are. Now I just need to tell, find out how to tell whether it's prime or composite. You all said that if the factors, if there's more than two factors, then it's a composite number. Okay, cool. I've got something that can do that. A control block or a control drawer. Go to if, else, and put this underneath the repeat. Don't put it inside the repeat. Put it underneath the repeat. Everyone make sure that you put it underneath the repeat. Go to data. It's got this thing that says, if length of factors. Length of factors is not like how long it is. It just means how many are there in this list. Oh, if there's more than two in the list, then I know it's a composite number. So let's go to operators. If there's more than two, then say that it's a composite number. All right, what I can do is go back to data, 
if length of factors, put that in the first slot there, is more than two, then say that's a composite number. Oh, you know what? I might want to say that what number it was. I'm going to do something interesting here. I'm not sure if you've seen this block before, but I can join two things together. So I'm going to drag over this join and put that where it says hello. I'll change this to like four seconds. I want to join the answer that they gave me. Put that where it says hello. Join answer space is a composite number. Now it will say like, what, what was that target number you put in? Five? It'll say five is a composite number or seven is a composite number. Otherwise, if the list of factors is not greater than four, then let's go back here and say, and I can go back to join, and I can go back to answer, and what? If it's not greater than two, this is space is a prime number. And I'll say that for four seconds. Last but not least, I gotta end my machine. So now I can drag over a block of code and I'm gonna put this all the way at the end and just say, thanks so much for using my machine and whatever else you wanna say. Once you've got that, you've got it working. I can test it a couple times and I encourage you to test your machine a couple times to see that it's actually working. If it's actually working, test it for 0, 1, 2, 10, so on, and let's just make sure that mine's working and it's saying 10 is a composite number. Hopefully yours works. If not, let me or Mr. Um, Newmark know. Thanks so much.